So today we're going to have a look at solving equations using the balancing method. So if you're given, say, an equation like this, and you have to solve for what we call the unknown or the variable x, and they give you something simple like this, it's very clear to us that x is going to be equal to 4, because 4 plus 2 will give me 6. But as we get on to more difficult equations, it won't be very clear what x will be. So we need a method to solve these equations. And we call this the balancing method. Let's have a look at scales like this. So, I, so these are old balancing, balancing scales. And on one side, I've got three rocks. And on the other side, I've got three rocks, three other rocks as well. So the scales are balanced because there's three on each side. But then what happens if I add two rocks to this side? My scales become tipped because there are five rocks on this side now and three rocks on this side. So this side is heavier and our scales are unbalanced. But if I add two rocks to this side, my, sp my scales become balanced again because I have five rocks on each side. So that's what we call the balancing method. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, you have to do the same to the other because an equation is a relationship. This equal sign in here is telling me that this side of the equation is equal to this side. So for example, if I add two to this side, I have to add two to this side as well to keep it balanced. So we're going to use that method to solve for X. But we have to be strategic about it. As in, I could add 100 to this side and I could add 100 to this side and my equation would be balanced, but I'd be no closer to finding x. So the whole point of this is to get x by itself or to isolate x. So for example, with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 from both sides. So we'll say x plus 2 minus 2 is equal to 6 minus 2. So I've taken 2 from both sides, so my equation is still balanced. But what happens here is I have a plus 2 and a minus 2. So when I take 2 from 2, it's just going to leave me with 0. So all I'm going to be left with on this side is x. And then that's going to be equal to 6 minus 2, which is 4, which is as we predicted at the start. All right, let's have a look at another one. So we have 3x minus 7 is equal to 2, and we need to solve for x. So I've got a 3x minus 7. And then I want to get rid of the 7 on this side. So what I'll do is I'll add both 7 to both sides. All right, minus seven plus seven is going to leave me with zero. So on this side, all I'm left with is three X. And then two plus seven will leave me with nine. So I'm, I have three X on this side, but I don't want three X. I just want one X. So what I'm gonna do is I'll divide both sides by three. The reason we do this is because three will divide into three once. So that leaves me with 1x on this side. And then 3 into 9 goes 3 times. And that is our answer for x there. So what we've just done is we've just used the balancing method to gradually simplify our equation until we have just 1x on the other side and whatever we're left with on the other side of the equation. So that will tell us what x is equal to. So in this line, I added seven to both sides and in this line, I divided both sides by three. So we're still keeping the equation balanced. We're just simplifying it down as much as possible to just leave us with X by itself. Um, but how do we know if we're right? So provided we haven't made a mistake. So what we can do is we can verify our answer. 
verify means to check that it's right or to show that it's correct. So if we start with our original equation, which was 3x minus 7 is equal to 2, in order to verify our answer, what we can do is we can, wherever we have an x, we can plug in our answer, which was 3. And we'll see then, as we simplify this side, will it equal 2? So we'll do that now. So we'll throw in an, a 3 here, because that's what we got as our answer. Minus 7 equals 2. 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 7 equals 2. 9 minus 7, so 2 is equal to 2. Which is obviously correct. So we've just shown that x is equal to 3 is in fact the solution to this equation. All right, let's have a look when they throw you a bit of a curveball and they put variables on both sides of the equation. So you just go on as normal as we've been doing. So just whatever we're doing to one side, we're doing to the other. So we've 4t plus 3. So what I'll do is I'll take 3 from both sides in the first step. So that's equal to 7t plus 39 minus 3. So 40, there's nothing to add the 40 to on this side, so it'll just stay as it is. And then we have a plus 3 minus 3, which will leave me with 0. So that we've equals 70 plus 39 minus 3. So that's going to leave me with plus 36. <clears throat> and then in the next line, what I'll do is I'll take 70 from both sides. Minus 70 is equal to 70 plus 36 minus 70. 40 minus 70 is going to leave me with minus 3t. And that's equal to, so I have a 70 on this side and I've taken 70 from this side as well. So that's gonna, well, they're gonna cancel off with each other. They'll just leave me with zero. So all I'm left with here then is 36. Okay, now there are two ways you can go about this. So I'm just going to split this down the middle and I'm going to say option one and option two. That is the beauty about solving an equation. There are many different ways to do them. So it'll just branch off like this. So in the first way, what we could do is we can multiply both sides by minus one is equal to minus one times 36. Okay, the reason we're doing this is because we have a minus three t here, but I'm not interested in any minus t's or minus three t's. I'm only interested in t. So I want to make this value of t positive. I want a positive sign in front of it. So a minus by a minus is going to give me a plus and then anything multiplied by one will just spit back out itself. So a minus by minus is plus, that's going to leave me plus 3t is equal to, and then I've got a minus by a positive or I'm sorry, a negative by a positive, however you want to say it. And one times 36 will leave me 36, so that's going to leave me minus 36. And then our last step, as before, we're just going to divide both sides by 3. So 3 into 3 will go once, and that will leave me with t. And then 3 into minus 36 is going to go minus 12 times. And that's my answer there. t is equal to minus 12. Okay, let's have a look very quickly at the other way you could have gone about this. So we're starting back here. We had minus 3t is equal to 36. Now, instead of going and saying multiplying both sides by minus 1 and then dividing by 3, what you could have done is you could have divided both sides here by minus 3. So minus 3 divided by minus 3 is going to give me 1. So I'm left with t there. 
and then minus 3 into 36. So what will multiply by minus 3 to give me 36? So it has to be a negative number and it's going to be 12 because minus 12 times minus 3 will give me 36. So like that, we've gotten the same answer in just two different ways. So you can do it the longer way where you multiply by minus 1 and then divide or you can do it the shorter way where you just divide by minus 3. If you're starting off solving equations using this method, I personally recommend this way. All right, and then we'll go ahead again and we'll verify our answer. So we'll take our original equation, which was 4t plus 3 is equal to 7t plus 39. So wherever we have a t, we're just going to plug in minus 12. So 4 times minus 12 plus 3 is equal to 7 times minus 12 plus 39. All right, so 4 times minus 12 is going to leave me with um, minus 48. And then plus 3 is equal to 7 times minus 12, leaving it minus 84 plus 39. So I'm just going to finish this off over here. So minus 48 plus 3 is going to leave with minus 45. And that's equal to minus 84 plus 39. So let's have a wee look. So minus 84 plus 39 is equal to minus 45. I don't know if that's very visible on the calculator. There we go. Minus 45. So you've just shown that when you plug in your answer of minus 12, the two sides equal or they're balanced. So therefore, you know that your t has to be minus 12. 